over the last year, what, year and a half, I've, we've been fortunate to have been able to, and we still do, fly into Honolulu every Sunday um, to study hula under Kumu Hula, uh, George Holokai. Now, Uncle George is um, 74 years old. And, you know, for us, and, and most, most of us in the class, most of us are Kumu Hula or Alakai. We've been dancing for a really long time. And our knees are given out, and our back is not so great, you know, anymore. Because when you're a hula dancer, your, your career as a dancer is very short. And so within that short time frame, you have to do a lot of stuff and get as much out as you can, yeah. Um, we've had our time in our, in our younger days, but, you know, we're trying to relive the glory days. <clears throat> and it just ain't working, you know, kind <laughs> You know, it's important that we learn whatever it is that Uncle George feels that we should learn. Whether it be a hula awana, a, a hula kahiko, a chant, a song, whatever the case might be. Um, that's important, yes. But I think for us, what's most important is that for most of us who have been teaching for so long, we forget what it's like to be a student. And we forget what it's like to be in the line and we have to share the limelight with others. Yeah, when you're a kumuhula, it's me, 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 and I, 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 and it is not a democracy, yeah? It is a dictatorship. It really, really is, yeah? Um, but when you're a student, it's very, very different. And so um, for us, because Uncle George um, is probably one of the last few remaining, um, for lack of a better word, master kumuhula, that have connections, almost direct connections, to those before him, who lived and was born in the 19th century. He's one of the last links to that particular time. And so we feel <clears throat> very, very fortunate, yeah, because we get to see what he sees. We get to feel what he feels. He sees the world in such a different way than any of us do today, that that is much more important. Although the hula is good too, that is important to us. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Uncle George Holokai. And so, like I said, there are those of us in the class who may be well-known, maybe not, uh, but there are those of us in the class, and we, we try as best as we can to keep up with mm, the class. <laughs> <clears throat> and I'd like to introduce um, some of my um, Hula brothers and sisters. And of course, well, before I do that, you know, Tony Lenchenko, who, who chanted for you earlier, also is in our class. Um, Michael Kopp is here. He's also in our class. Where's, oh, right there. And there might be a few more. Anybody else? Anybody made the trip? No? Aole? Okay, that's it. Um, but I'd like to call the rest of my hula brothers and sisters to come out and... Um, come, 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 come. <laughs> this first melee that we'd like to do for you um, is a combination of um, ancient and modern. And Uncle George put this together years ago. And uh, we'd like to present that to you this evening. Nohi lalo. This is a mele for Kalakaua, one of the Nalani Eha. Makakao, Anko. I am Makakao. Hi. Anuai.
<laughs> um, I want to introduce everybody here on stage to um, some people you may know, some people you don't. That's okay. You're going to know them today. Mark, Elena, Aukele, Sally, Frankie, Mr. Puoke, and Nogomeyer. This, this next melee takes us to the island of Oahu, to a place called Papakolea. If you don't know where Papakolea is, Fara, come, come, come. Mike, you want to come? Come. Mike, Mike, Mike. Whatever. Um, Papakolea is, we think, uh, one of the first established uh, um, homestead sites on the island of Oahu. And Papakolea is famous for many, many things, but one of the things it's famous for is Plumeria, yeah, the, the Pua Melia. And like with many, many different songs that are written in the Hawaiian language, there's always, usually, not always, but usually, an underlying, perhaps, sexual meaning. <laughs> yeah, what a surprise! Um, in one verse, when, when, you, when uh, the lover returns to Makiki um, to string flowers to wear as a lei, that seems pretty innocent enough. But if you think about the imagery, you pluck that blossom, you get your needle, you poke it. <laughs> yeah? You wear that, and you make your lei because you pow. Yeah? And so the sexual connotation in that is, is important, uh, although it's not up in your face, which is a very Hawaiian thing to do. So, Uncle George Makoko. Hi. I know I 
Mahal. Um, one of, one of the, the most valuable things about um, these mele that, we, that we're learning and that we sing and that we compose. Mahalo, Tony. Mahalo, Nui. Um, one of the values of these, these little snippets of information, that's what it is. Poetry, Hawaiian poetry, at whatever point in time that it was written, is a, is a viewpoint of that particular event or place. Um, at that particular time. And when you have a whole body of um, chants and songs and poetry that date back to 2,000 years, you have lots of snippets. And when you bring one snippet out from whatever time period and you sing it, you chant it, you dance it, it comes alive again. And which is good for us because it gives us information about a place and about people. This particular one is song is no exception. Um, it's called Kuvili. And Kuvili, the place name really doesn't exist anymore, yeah? Or does it? It's still, it's still used. Underneath the welfare office. <laughs> <laughs> it's underneath the what? The welfare office. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, places change, yeah? <laughs> but when we have songs like this, yeah, we are reminded of what used to be in that particular area. Now, Kuvili used to have a fish pond. You said, yeah? Two fish ponds. Okay, thank you. See, here's the encyclopedia <laughs> over there. Um, it had a couple of fish ponds, probably from ancient times into the 19th century, probably. Yeah? Okay. Let's check. I got to check with the, the man. Oh, okay. So the second song that we're going to do, which is a medley, is, well, not the second song, but a second verse, um, it's a place called Kanauwewe, which is where Aala Park is now. My point is that with these songs, we learn about our places, we learn about our people, and we learn about our culture. And even though that place may not exist anymore, because you know, after the fish ponds was, was gone, you had a brothel in that particular area. What else we had over there? Prison. <laughs> and now, the welfare office. <laughs> rich history, rich, rich. <laughs> Anyway, we are Makoko.
Joe. <laughs> oh, mahalo. <laughs> mahalo, Anui. Uh, you've made my kumu very, very happy. Mahalo for that wonderful. 